Hi scholars, this is Miss Flack from Arte. How are you guys doing today? I'm glad you can spend this time with me. But have you guys ever heard of the phrase, a dog ate my homework? People tend to use that phrase a lot when they are being absent-minded or they've misplaced something or when they're just being lazy and they didn't complete something that needed to be completed. Don't get me wrong, dogs can be very mischievous, as we'll hear later, but they do not eat important papers. Have you guys ever heard of Isaac Newton? Isaac Newton is a famous scientist during the 17th century who discovered some of the world's most famous discoveries of light, gravity, motion, and the way the world works around us. Sir Isaac Newton by Nathaniel Hawthorne, adapted by Jenna Thompson. In January of 1643, Isaac Newton was born at a small village of Wolsthorpe, England. Little did his mother think when she held her newborn baby that he was destined to explain many wonders of the universe, which had been a mystery ever since the creation of the world. After Isaac's father died, Mrs. Newton left her son to the care of his good old grandmother, who was very kind to him and sent him to school. In his early years, Isaac did not appear to be a very bright scholar, but he was chiefly remarkable for his cleverness in mechanics. He had a set of tools and saws of various sizes, which he made himself. With the aid of these, Isaac contrived to make many curious articles, and he worked with so much skill that he seemed to have been born with a saw or a chisel in his hand. Isaac possessed a wonderful ability to acquire knowledge by the simplest means. He built a water clock, a sundial, and a windmill just by working out in his mind what could make them work. Even in his boyish activities, he was continually searching out the secrets of philosophy. As Isaac grew older, it was found that he had many important matters in his mind all day long. It left him to himself. He was either absorbed in thought or engaged in some book of mathematics or natural philosophy. At night, I think it probable he looked up with awe and curiosity to the stars and wondered whether they were a world like our own. How great was their distance from earth and what was the power that kept them in their courses? Perhaps even at such a young age, Isaac Newton felt an inclination that he would one day be able to answer all these questions. My story would be far too long if I were to mention all the splendid discoveries he made once he came to be a man. He was the first that found out the nature of light. Before his time, nobody could tell what the sunshine was composed of. You remember, I suppose, the story of an apple falling on his head? This led him to discover the force of gravity which kept the keeps the heavenly bodies in their courses. When he had once got a hold of this idea, he never permitted his mind to rest until he had searched out all the laws that guide the planets through the skies. This he did as thoroughly as if he had gone up among the stars and tracked them in their orbits himself. He was accustomed to spend night after night in a lofty tower, gazing at the heavenly bodies through a telescope. His mind was lifted far above the things of this world. It may even be said that he spent the greater part of his life in worlds that lie thousands and millions of miles away, for there the thoughts and the heart are. There is our true existence. Now I will tell you the story of Newton and his little dog, Diamond. One day when he was 50 years old and had been hard at work for more than 20 years studying the theory of light, he went out of his chamber to answer the door, leaving his little dog asleep 
before the fire. On the table lay a heap of manuscript papers that contained all the discoveries which Newton had made during those twenty years. When his master was gone, up rose the playful little diamond, jumped upon the table, and overthrew the lighted candle. The papers immediately caught fire. Just as the destruction was completed, Newton opened the chamber door and saw that his work of twenty years was now reduced to a heap of ashes. There stood little Diamond, the author of all this mischief. Almost any other man would have been very angry at the dog and removed him from their home. But Newton patted him on the head with his usual kindness, although his heart was filled with grief. Oh, Diamond, Diamond, he exclaimed, you little know the mischief you have done. This accident affected Newton's health and his spirits for some time afterwards. He was very sad over all his lost work. But from the, his conduct toward the little dog, you may judge what was the sweetest of his temper. Newton lived to be a very old man and acquired great fame. He was made a member of parliament and received the honor of kinghood from the king. He cared little for earthly fame and honors. However, he felt no pride in the greatness of his knowledge. All he had learned only made him feel how little he knew in comparison to what remained to be unknown. I seem to myself like a child, he observed, playing on the seahorse and picking up here and there curious shell or a pretty pebble, while the boundless ocean of truth lies undiscovered before me. Sir Isaac Newton lived to be an old man, passing away at the age of 85. He was left a fame behind him, which will be an undurable, as if his name were written in letters of light formed by stars upon the midnight sky. So what virtues did you notice in Isaac Newton? Some of the virtues that I noticed in Isaac Newton were humility, patient. He had very patient with his dog. He was honest. He persevered. He had courage. And he never, he just never gave up. Those are all important virtues to have. So this is what they look like. You will need paper and you'll need scissors and a paper clip. I'm going to show you how to make them. So with your scissors, you're going to cut your paper. You're not going to cut it all the way. That should be about good. Then you're going to flip your paper over and you're going to cut another slit. There. Now it should look something like this. Okay, you're going to bring one forward and the other one forward. And you're going to put a paper clip on it. You can make big ones, small ones, or even thicker ones. But before you test it out, write down your predictions. And that's called a hypothesis when you're making predictions. And you can see which one is going to fall down first and spin the most. So this one's my bigger one. This one's my smaller one. It's a lot of fun, guys. Now this one's with thicker paper and I have a binder clip instead. You can test it out with different clips, a bigger clip, a smaller clip, a binder clip. And tell me if your predictions were correct in the comments down below. I would love to know if you were correct in your predictions. 
I hope you enjoyed spending time with me. I'm glad you got to spend time with me. And I hope that you stay safe and that you stay curious. And I hope you have a good rest of your day. Bye.